ketoacidosis. If you don't know what this is and how it works, it can create some confusion and even concern among people adopting a ketogenic diet. It's also brought up a lot in the comments section on certain videos pertaining to nutritional ketosis. And so I thought I'd just clear up any potential doubt that certain individuals may have. So what is ketoacidosis? Well, in simple terms, it's the state of having excess ketones circulating in our blood to such a degree that it changes the body's pH. And this can be fatal, so it's no joke, but it should certainly not be conflated with nutritional ketosis. These are entirely different things, and I'll explain why. Firstly, the people most at risk of developing such high ketone levels are actually type 1 diabetics. And that's because type 1 diabetics produce little to no insulin. And insulin is responsible for pulling the sugar out of the blood. Now, if you're not on top of your medication, or you don't even know you have type 1 diabetes, and you're eating lots of carbohydrates, your blood sugar is chronically elevated, the insulin isn't there to take the sugar out of the blood, now your body thinks it's starving. And so the body then falls back on producing ketones, which is fine, but in this context, it's dangerous because now the blood is becoming very acidic, and this is very, very dangerous and actually the most common reason for type 1 diabetics to be hospitalized. It's very important to understand that nutritional ketosis and even the production of ketones during a fast are not causing certain individuals to wind up in this state of ketoacidosis. It's always high blood sugar, no insulin. And this is why type 1 diabetics are the most common sufferers. Paul Mason brings up an interesting point about type 2 diabetics that take medication called SGLT2 inhibitors. Any patient on an SGLT2 inhibitor, I will stop that medication before I advise them to start a low carbohydrate or a ketogenic diet. Nutritional ketosis, on the other hand, is the state that the body finds itself in when on a low to zero carb diet, the liver starts to oxidize fatty acids and generate ketone bodies which nourish and fuel the cells in the body. So these should never be conflated. You know, nutritional ketosis is healthy, non-inflammatory. It's perfectly natural. But ketoacidosis is this dire strait situation that mostly type 1 diabetics find themselves in. Now, I'm sure it is possible, maybe, you know, at least in my imagination, that someone could potentially achieve ketoacidosis coming from a different angle, but it's unheard of pretty much. It's almost impossible. And so, honestly, for anyone adopting a ketogenic diet, a carnivore diet, there is no real cause for concern. This is a totally natural, healthy way of being, and it's only really type one diabetics and people on certain medications that are at risk here. Most people struggle to get their ketones between over one millimole a litre or perhaps three millimoles a litre. And even in patients who have done a seven day complete water fast, I will rarely see the ketones over five or maybe six. But medically, the ketones don't become a problem with respect to ketoacidosis until it goes over 10. Anyway, I hope this has been clear and helpful. Please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Cheers guys.